Okay, so a big issue that many people, especially in Mumbai and and our listeners, yeah. face is sleep. Yeah. Right. Um, sleep has got a bad rep because like it's a wastage of time. People think. Mm. What is your um, take on sleep, and why is sleep so important for us? Look, evolutionary is, evolution is such a precise science. Anything that's not advantageous to an organism is rooted out. Right? Not on time scales that we're used to, but on planetary time scales, and the fact that sleep remains something which every life form to some degree mm. has means that there is a critical component of it which is advantageous to the organism otherwise it's it's pretty um yeah, it's 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 pretty weird to think that you would effectively shut down the machine for 8 hours in a day a third of our life and leave you prey vulnerable to predators around you right without protection so clearly there's a evolutionary advantage of doing so um sleep plays many roles physical recovery mental recovery, emotional growth, all of those things, the different phases or components of sleep, deep sleep for physical health, REM sleep, which is where our dreams happen, that's for your mental and emotional repair and growth, etc. So I think these are very important biological principles, which increasingly now people are being made more and more aware of. Mm. Um, if we look at any data, whether it's the data from our high performance athletes, to corporate executives, to you know, just health conditions like diabetes, insulin resistance, neurodegenerative disorders like dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. There are direct links now showing how a lack of sleep over prolonged periods of time cause a deterioration in function and therefore health and mm -hmm. performance. So mm -hmm. it's a very powerful drug. Mm -hmm. It's freely available to us and we're just not utilizing it to our advantage, because which is hugely free. frustrating because it's free, perhaps. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you just don't respect the things that are free. You ask any rich man, you know, how much they would give for a good night's sleep, and they'd probably give you their, their entire kingdom. It's true. It's so true. Yeah. It's, it's one of those hard things to understand, right? Mm. Like, it is the most natural thing for babies to be doing, and somewhere along the line, we've lost it. Yeah. There's a theory that we've forgotten how to sleep correctly. Right. You know, like, uh, do we have one f proper full sleep cycle? Do we wake up in the middle of the night, walk around, come back? Like, what format of sleep are humans supposed to have yeah. has been lost to the ages? Yeah. And I think it's such a beautiful topic to start focusing on as a mm. way. What are some of your favorite hacks to get a good night's sleep? Magnesium is very important mm. because it plays uh, a role across, I think, something like 600 different metabolic reactions mm. and pathways. But it is a very powerful aid for sleeping. Mm. It's advantageous because it's non-toxic, by and large, obviously brand dependent. Uh, it is non-addictive. And the uh, profile means that you can go at a really high dose and you don't need to be too worried about, uh, you know, physiological reactions or, or, or adverse events in the, in the body. Except Plus, pooping. Except, except sometimes some people, gastrointestinal mm. disturbances. Sometimes. I know it was a... Uh it was like a sure, sure thing whether if you like overdose on your magnesium. If you're very, very high, if you're mm. ridiculously high levels. But in the dosages that we look at, which mm. is typically four to 600 milligrams per day, there's, there's generally not, there's, there's not a problem. Yeah. So magnesium for me over the last three or four years have been, has been a great addition to my toolkit. And it's something we prescribe for everyone in our longevity practice. The next thing uh, is temperature. Mm. So the importance of core body temperature is that as we prepare and get into deep sleep, our core body temperature drops as our metabolic rate drops. And we can assist that by altering the ambient temperature around us. So it's typical studies have shown that uh, 17 to 19 degrees Celsius, you know, 60 to 64 degrees Fahrenheit mm. is an optimal range. I do appreciate that some people find that too cold. Correct. And I have many clients and patients who tell me that their partner cannot tolerate. Yeah, I don't like, have a biohack for that. 19 degrees? <laughs> <laughs> there is now a bed, hmm. I won't mention the brand, there is a bed available uh, where both halves of the bed, like a car, can be temperature controlled. controlled. So one partner can be at a warm, the other partner can be at a cold. So hmm. it's expensive, but hmm. you know, there's a cost <laughs> to comfort nowadays. Yeah. Uh, and uh, hopefully sleeping in the same room, that's hmm. that's more important. Hmm. So yeah, so temperatures has been another so big... That's an interesting one. Same room, same bed, same room, different beds. Uh, look... Uh, if you're an influencer in longevity like Brian Johnson is, mm. 
he sleeps alone. Uh, and I think he has the record for the longest most, perfect cycle, longest perfect yeah, cycle, yeah, yeah. etc. Right now, I like sharing my bed with my partner. Hmm. Uh, you know, there are there are additional there, benefits. There are perks that, to that. that. There are perks <laughs> to that. Uh, so I, I think they they compensate for perhaps not getting a hundred percent sleep. Hmm. Um, I'm sure I'm going to be in trouble when she watches this. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I still advocate for partners sharing a bed together. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So that's the that's the other uh, temperature is a powerful one. There's a thermal contrast effect. So heat therapy, sauna therapy, a hot shower, immersion in warm water like a hot bath mm. uh, helps in vasodilation, nitric oxide release, uh, relaxes uh, blood pressure, blood pressure. Uh, reduces uh, sort of the stress response, and if exposed to immediately before a cold environment, that sort of thermal contrast mm. can be an, addi an additive effect from a biohacking okay, perspective. And I've certainly seen that whenever I'm traveling, if, if I have access to a steam or sauna in the hotel, I'll go down and spend 20 minutes in that, you know, up to 30 so to 40 just minutes. Before sleep. Just before ah, sleep. Okay, yeah, yeah. Very, very powerful mm. relaxa uh, relaxation agent. What are your thoughts on those sauna blankets that you can, you know, roll out? I mean, at I've, home? I've not used it. I think uh, some of the challenges there is the core body temperature, mm. right? Uh, the key here is that you want to raise body temperature before you go to bed, mm. but whilst you're in asleep, you want to make sure the ambient temperature is uh, is nice and low. Mm. And I think we've all experienced nights which have been too hot, and we've had a really poor night's Correct. sleep because Correct. of it, right? So that's another thing. I think technology usage is very, very, uh, very bad mm. from a sleep perspective. Everyone will know have heard about red, uh, blue, blue light, white light uh, from screens. Mm. Uh, so making sure sure that you have a nice sleep routine where you're disconnecting, you're engaging in media, which is not raising your adrenaline levels. So not seeing those silly news programs where 10 people are shouting at each other with those red banners and all yeah, of that stuff. 75 people have died in something, correct? Yeah. Mm. So, you know, watching a fun comedy, listening to your favorite podcast, Audible Book Plug, mm. <laughs> uh, and or, you know, reading a nice book, etc. Those are these are nice things to do, uh, which help. Do what? all of you all wear blue blockers at home? No, so I have um, I have a pair of blue blockers that I will use if I'm on my laptop or iPad, you know, late into the night. If I'm doing, let's say, a live or a digital engagement for a client in the US or Europe, etc. So I have to be on there late. So I'll wear the blue blockers there. I have a set of red lenses, mm -hmm. which if I'm doing like a red eye flight or a late flight, I'll have in my travel bag. Okay. Uh, because of the LEDs in the airport Airports, and on right. the aircraft, mm -hmm. uh, people look at me as if I'm a cyborg or something from the X-Men. Yeah. I think it's a good conversation starter. Or a celebrity. Oh, yeah, or a celebrity, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I'm a fan of superheroes. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so I have those, you know, handily available. So those are those are nice and, and easy to use. Uh, what you eat is also very powerful. Um, now, generally speaking, the advice is that one shouldn't eat for about two or three hours before we go to bed. Mm -hmm. You know, ancient wisdoms eat from sunrise to sunset. Correct. Very, very effective. Uh, and and ensuring that meal is on the lower side of carbohydrates because mm -hmm. you don't want too much insulin riding around in the system. So have your protein, have your good fat and fiber, stay well hydrated, um, uh, consume and finish about two to three hours before you go to sleep. Those are really powerful. There are foods which contain tryptophan, which get broken down in the body to help produce melatonin, mm. which is the hormone which re relaxes the body. And there are many vegetables and food items that one and nuts and seeds, etc., that you can consume uh, from that perspective. So actually, there's there's quite a lot out there in the toolkit. I mean, I'm what probably got foods. I know like pistachios are good. Pistachios are good. I think green leafy vegetables mm. are another. Rice uh, has right. Ah, uh, is it? Rice I'm, is tryptophan. That's why I don't know about that. And mm. I think my team are gonna you know berate me for not uh, knowing this when no. asked the question but uh, luckily we have Google Siri we'll, Alexa we'll find and, out which are. and oh, hmm. chat GPT and all of that for that so yeah those are those are powerful so mm. actually there's a lot one can do right to mm. get and none of these are crazy expensive crazy difficult it's just about the right behaviors and habits to get going I think it's for people the idea of um, you know how can I go to sleep when my friends are still awake you know, especially in, in this generation, that's mm. a huge thing, right? Like, I'm yeah. going to miss out on something. They'll send me something and I won't be able to so see it. So we converted FOMO to JOMO. Mm. You know, we actually, uh, it's a little sadistic, I suppose, but we take great pleasure in 
you know, not turning up or going out for all the stuff that, because, you know, frankly, you don't need to, Correct. right? Uh, especially when there's big stuff happening. And also ensuring that we slip away early, mm. uh, you know, those extra hours in bed mm. have a huge, huge uh, benefit. A very interesting statistic um, because of the challenges faced in India, that one night of poor sleep mm. uh, leads to a four to eight fold increase in insulin resistance over the next 24 hours, right? Uh, and that means your metabolic machinery has to work that much harder, Correct. especially in an environment where we have a lot of carbohydrates and excessive uh, sugars in our diets. And you always feel hungry the next two days in any case after yeah. a That's bad because night. of ghrelin and leptin changes, right. right? It just makes you feel more hungry. And psychologically, you're more favorable towards trans fats, salt, and sugar. Mm. It's a physiological response. Your body has recognized you're in a sleep-deprived state. Mm. Your attention is gonna be diminished. So I need to consume calories to keep my alertness level high mm. because there's a predator that's about to get me. We didn't evolve in a land of uh, food booking applications. Yeah. Now anyone can get anything within 10 minutes, which is absurd, mm. really absurd. It just means that trigger to reward Time is so little, so short. So short. Yeah. I was watching a video where this person was saying that you know it was about two in the night, and I felt like having this um, soup from the shop. And where's the shop? Underneath my building. Okay. But I called one of these food delivery apps. <laughs> this man actually came and delivered it from the ground floor up to the. My first. goodness. So yeah. so it's it's crazy just how dependent we've gotten on yeah. these. Yeah. Our lifestyles have changed completely. Right, if you go to the US and you use one of these platforms, they'll and you order a banana. The banana comes peeled and cut in a plastic uh, in a plastic covering. I mean, it's just, it's yeah, the banana has its own covering. It's yeah. naturally <laughs> provided, and you can chew. You yeah. know, we can bite and chew. It doesn't need to be cut for us. Yeah. For these parties, my new yeah. thing is follow the Lefo format: last in, first out. Oh, that's good. Right? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you don't want to be too. I mean, that might be too late, right? Last in. Yeah, but then you, at least you met everybody. Okay. Because if you're first in, first out, yeah. you've not met half the people. Though. That's true. And mm. best thing is, forget about saying bye. Because mm. that, that that process alone can take half an hour to one hour. It's yeah. called the Irish escape or something. Irish escape, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So, um, You'll be giving away all my uh, social secrets. <laughs> I'm just going to realize this now. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure your friends don't watch this. <laughs> no, no, watch it. I, V, M.